Hey guys, welcome to the Solution Architect channel. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the differences between creating a network on AWS and creating a network on Azure. And I'm also going to take you into a demo creating these networks. One of the important things companies look at is when they deploy things to the cloud is how can they secure the environment. One of the things that you need to consider is creating a private network for yourself to actually host your resources on the cloud. And both these platforms allow that to, to give you a secure environment that you can host your applications and your services. So I'm going to take you through the detail on both these platforms, what they have, what's available. And I'm going to also do some um, demo on how to create a virtual uh, virtual network on these platforms. So let's jump into this. Let me show you what's on AWS and let me show you what is on Azure. Now, before I take you through all the detail on what's on these, the platforms, I think it's important for you to understand what is uh, the difference between what uh, is available on AWS and, and Azure. But as a developer, sometimes we, we don't really care too much about the environments, but I think it's really important as a solution architect to, to understand what these environments is going to look like so that you can host your applications within them. So I've just used a, I didn't want to create my own diagram. So this is on AWS and uh, I'm going to just explain some of these concepts that is on AWS. So they've got a VPC here. Um, AWS enables you to launch a um, a resource into a virtual network, which they call a virtual private cloud. So there's a few things that you need within a virtual network. One of the things is a, uh, a subnet. Um, you can see you've got a private subnet and a public subnet here. The subnet is just a, s a segment of the virtual network uh, with a range of IP addresses uh, inside your VPC. Now you can have, like you said, a public subnet, and this is where you can host applications or web applications that is available for the public in the internet to actually view. So any websites that you see is normally on a public subnet. Your private subnets normally where you host all your um, applications, your backend, your databases, and, and things like that. You also have a routing table. Now um, a routing table contains a set of rules uh, called routes that are used to determine where the network traffic is directed. So you can have a routing table that actually routes the tables between private and public inside here. Um, you also need to have an internet gateway. Um, that is a component that allows you to communicate between instances in your VPC and the inter internet. You can see that, so, so every external e uh, people that actually view it from the internet will go through the internet gateway. Now, um, AWS also have a thing called um, a private link. Now, there's ways that you can actually connect your on-premise um, applications with uh, cloud uh, applications. Um, there's VPNs. I'm, I'm going to go into that detail. You've got site-to-site -site VPNs. You've got point-to-site VPN. you get private link. Uh, you get uh, direct connect. Um, that's all in AWS. Now, let's jump over to Azure. Now, this is also just a diagram on uh, the Microsoft's uh, website. Um, now, in Azure, uh, a private network is called a virtual network. So it's called a VNet um, inside Azure. You also need address spaces. And this is to specify uh, a custom private IP address space uh, that's using public or um, private addresses. As the same as in, um, in Azure, same as in AWS, you also need a subnet. Now, you can have a public or a, pub, a private subnet. Um, and it's also just a, a segment to group your resources within a, a specific network. Um, now, inside Azure, uh, they, they also have things that are called uh, regions. Um, so a virtual network is scoped to a single region or location. However, uh, multiple virtual networks uh, from different regions can be connected together using a virtual network peering, what they call. Um, in Azure, the virtual network is scoped to the Azure subscription. So if you have a subscription, it will be scoped to that. As you can see on the screen here, we've got NSG, which is a network secure group, which you can group a um, network 
you know all your applications like uh, like the, you can see a web service which will hope a web uh, host a website um, and that will make sure that this network secure group is configured that um, the public internet can actually be able to view your website then you've got like uh, you can configure a network secure group for your backend so only your front end applications can access your backend which is your databases and and, and servers like that so uh, let's jump into let me show you uh, exactly what is an Azure, uh, AWS and what is in Azure on its portals okay so I'm inside uh, AWS management console and we want to go to networks so go to networking and content delivery you can see uh, there's a few options here first thing that you want to go into is your VPC or a virtual private cloud and I'm going to open that now to, in AWS uh, to, to create new resources it requires a VPC so you need to have a default VPC um, you cannot create anything on AWS if you don't have a default VPC so I've got one VPC that I've created here I'm not sure why is it North, North Virginia but anyway so on your left hand side here the the four most important um, options here or or um, menu items is your your VPC subnets the routing tables and if you have an internet gateway and you set that up um, so I've got I've got a few subnets there um, and normally a subnet, subnet is just a group of IP addresses so let, let me just go and show you my VPC here and this is how it looks like after you created your VPC I just have a few default settings in inside here you also have your IP version 4 that which is inter internet protocol version 4 and the CIDR stands for classless internet domain uh, routing and if you look at your CIDR blocks here it, it allocated a range of IP addresses now just to clarify there is two protocols of internet protocols there is a version 4 and then version 6 and what it is it's just version 4 uses 32-bit um, address spaces and it will give you around say 4 million addresses um, that's more than more than enough for me but I think uh, some companies a uh, lot very large companies even like Amazon probably uses much more than that there is a new version uh, version 6 uh, the protocol uses 128 bits so that's the difference between the two version protocols so so first of all you have to have your VPC set up it needs to have a, um, a you know it needs to have this uh, domain routing set up and then you need to be able to set up some subnets as well so let's go to subnets and show you there so I've got a few subnets here inside a subnet you know normally when you create a subnet it's just a a place within uh, Amazon um, you also allocated to a av availability zone and this is US East Coast uh, I'm not sure why that was selected probably automatically for me and you've got your routing table and your routing table just um, specifies your IP IP range that you're going to use and we've got uh, our network ACL which um, stands for network access control list and this is where you actually put in your inbound and outbound rules and you can have, have rules that you can actually uh, specify specifically for the subnet um, from which IP source now when you see 0000, 000, 000 it means that it allows any traffic coming coming in um, this is not really good practice but this is just the default VPC I've got actually nothing running on AWS right now so you've got your this is your routing tables you um, can also select it going in here all your routes uh, so I've got my routing table inside there and then also you can also go and configure internet gateways here so I've got one year um, connected but I haven't set anything up for internet gateway allowing any anything coming in from the public so before we go to Azure let me just explain a few things that's quite important you know when you create a virtual network most companies want to con have connectivity between their on-premise networks to their cloud networks now in Amazon AWS there's uh, different concepts 
Um, it's similar to Azure. I'll, I'll explain Azure one later, but I just want to explain a few concepts. That's quite important when you start creating a connectivity between your um, virtual network, virtual cloud network inside AWS and your on-premise. So one of the things that you can use um, a thing called, like, called network address translation. It's a NAT gateway uh, to enable instances in a private subnet to connect to the internet or to other AWS services, but that's not the only thing you need. There's uh, three different types of connectivity that you can use within AWS. Uh, the one is called a direct connect. The other one is called a VPN, a site-to-site -site VPN. And you, the other one is uh, called a private link. So VPC endpoint is also that what they uh, use in AWS that to enable your, you to privately connect to your VPC to support AWS services and a VPC endpoint service powered by a private link without uh, requiring an internet gateway. So you don't need one if you use private link. But that's one option to do that. The other uh, way is using Direct Connect. It's also one of uh, a cloud service solution that makes it easy to, to establish a dedicated network connection between your on-premise applications and your AWS network. Um, the, the other one is probably most common one used by uh, large corporations is called VPN, uh, Virtual Private Network, and is, is a managed client-based uh, VPN service that enables you to securely access your AWS resources to your on-premise network. One of the things that you have to have when you create a, a VPN is a, like a VPN device within your um, network to be able to securely connect to AWS. Now let's jump into Azure. Now on Azure, um, you go to networking and you've got a few things that you can select out of the box here. Now um, we want to go into virtual networks. Now I haven't set up like in Azure, you don't need to have a virtual network to run certain resources, which just means it's bad practice really. In reality, if you go to production, you need to, you want to put it into um, a virtual network and you want to have your resources um, allocated IP addresses within that um, subnets of that virtual network. Now, this is how you create one. We can create one on Azure. I need to have a uh, resource group. I'm just going to select any one of my resource groups here. Um, I'm going to let me select Northern Europe. Okay, and I'm just going to give my virtual network a, I'm just going to say the architect VNet Northern Europe. And uh, by default, it's just going to allocate um, IP addresses there. I'm just going to uh, leave it by default using uh, the Ethernet protocol version 4. So you can see similarities between AWS and, and Azure. You, the similar things, when you create a network on your on-premise, you, you need uh, similar things to actually create that network. So let's go to security. Just going to leave it at the uh, basic security. I'm not going to uh, enable a firewall. and review it and say create and that's how simple it is to create a virtual network within azure but then you have to go and configure your your um, network your regions your um, ip addresses um, all of that and then you can then what you can do is connect virtual machines or some of your applications you can connect onto this virtual network go into there and we've got our virtual network. So just um, quickly glance through this, a few settings that you can set up. You see you've got also your subnets here, and it will create a default subnet. And I can change some settings in this. I can actually now also, like I showed you earlier, the network security group. I, I don't have one, but I can select a network security group for this specific sub subnet, and I can make this also, if I want to make it public or not public, I can uh, create it within that network security group. So just go back there. And a few other things, you know, security, firewall settings, DNS servers, which is your domain name server. So um, some peering, and you can also put in uh, private endpoints and service endpoints. 
uh, all of those things available and, and similar things is available inside AWS as well. It's just named it differently. Um, so I think it's really important that you do this, you know, for a environment, uh, for all your environments. You can have maybe a virtual network for your development environment, one for UAT or QA and one for your production environment. Now, so before I end this video, I just want to quickly explain that in Azure, you also got the similar uh, technology to be able to connect your on-premise uh, applications or on-premise network to, to your Azure um, virtual network. You've got a thing called point-to-point, point-to-site -point, um, point virtual private network, uh, which connects your a single computer uh, in a on-premise um, network. So you can use point to site for that and you've got site to site which is uh, creating connectivity between your on-premise VPN device as well as your Azure VPN gateway on uh, on the virtual network in, inside Azure. And then you've got another thing I think a lot of companies prefer this maybe um, it's called Express Route. Uh, it's a private connect, uh, connection using Express Route Partner. Um, example, you can use uh, Express Route to connect your on-premise users to Office 365 or your SharePoint environment on Azure or other platforms, services within Azure. So you can have different networks that you can connect using the Express Route um, connectivity. So that is yeah, that's, that is virtual networks for you guys. Um, so hopefully you learned a little bit more and the comparison between the two, it's really similar. There's no winner or loser right here. It's really important uh, to note that you need a virtual network in both these cloud platforms to be able to run your resources, your applications, your virtual machines securely. And it's really important to set up these things. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't done that. Please share my videos. If you haven't done that, please do it now and click the like button. See you next time.